Okay, we'll, we'll get yeah. started then if people want to join the in. Um, so this session is about Power Automate and how to use the Power Automate platform and really accelerate automation within your organisation. Um, it is not called Flow anymore, but we will touch on that in a second. Um, I know it's not called Flow outside, but it is actually Power Automate. And if you saw John's keynote this morning, he was calling it Flow. Um, so I don't think that's ever going to go away. I think Flow is going to be the new style. Um, so I'm Dave Buddle, I'm from Power Objects, I'm the Architecture Capability Lead. I am the only Scottish Power Objects employee out of 270 of us in the UK, um, which is why I'm here to talk to you today. First of all, a quick word from all the sponsors that made this possible. Um, I'm not going to read them all out, I'm sure you've all seen them this morning at the keynote. Um, but I have to put this slide up, so there it is, and we'll skip quickly one. This is quite a social session, um, so I have put up my Twitter handle and also a hashtag. So if you want to take photos, if you want to do videos, anything like that, please do. And just use this hashtag. I need some people to do it because it does, some of my demo relies on this. So if nobody does it, I'm going to look quite silly when we get to that point. Um, so I'll leave that up there for a second because everybody's got it. If anybody forgets it, just shout out and I'll go back to this slide in a wee bit. Have they got it? Good? Okay. So what is a pattern? A pattern is something that you can use for consistent and reusable design. So what I'm going to talk to you about today is how to use the Power Automate platform in order to implement automation into your organisation. What you'll find is the majority of the automation that you put into your organisation will all be very similar but with just some slightly different use cases. So what I'm going to talk to you about is how to use the platform, the tools, and the templates that are available in order to quickly introduce automation into your, your company. So what I'm going to cover today is, I'm going to talk about how to accelerate your journey into automation, how to then take that journey and reuse and repeat patterns, and then probably the most important piece is how do you actually keep control of that. Um, I've got a few stories where people have built flows or power automates um, where they've gone horrendously wrong and I'll talk to you about that and how to control and stop some of that happening. So the first piece that I'm going to talk to you about is accelerating. So what is the quickest way of using flow and power automate to actually start introducing automation into the organisation? The simplest and easiest way is using the Power Automate templates. I don't know whether people have been on the Power Automate portal recently. There's hundreds and hundreds of templates for almost every connector. Um, so the last time I counted, there was 314 connectors available, and every one of them has got at least one template available for you to use. So what I'm going to do is show you how to utilize these templates in order to accelerate your journey into, into automation. The next area that you can look at is community templates. Um, so if you go to the Power Automate community, there's the Power Automate cookbook. So this is where people in the community have built up various flows, various um, automations, and they've given you the information to either recreate them. Normally they give you a download as well, so you can just import that into your organization and begin using it. So I'm going to do a first demo. So I had planned an absolute slick demo this morning that I knew exactly what I was going to do, but I decided I was going to change it. So this is either going to go really well or horrendously bad. So what I want people to do is pick a trigger. So I don't know what people are going to pick. So as I say, it could go horrendously wrong, but we'll find out. So show of hands or shout out however you want to. What trigger point should we start with? The Okay. <laughs> Using that trigger. I don't. I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also for action. Teams. Content conversion, email or teams. 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 And for action. Hello. Okay, I don't know how to do this, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Stage 
you're not a logical flow through this. Okay, so where we'll start is the good old Office 365 portal. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Power Automate. It's my starting point for my automation journey. As you see, Microsoft are really good at giving you some good ideas in terms of templates that you should be using, kind of most popular templates. And I've also noticed that they've started giving feature templates. So if you've got a particular sales process or a particular area of productivity that you're looking to improve on, they've went through all of the templates that are available in the community and recommended a few of them. So you do have the option to say, for example, if you want to do help your sales team, They've then given a list of templates and they've categorised them. How do you stay involved with your business? How do you manage the contract sign-offs? So really, if there's any business scenario you can think of, there's generally a good starting point within the, the templates. So what we'll do is, it's all about accelerating. So I don't want to start a template from scratch. So what I'll do is I'll start with Dynamics. And what that will do is it will bring up all of the templates where the Dynamics Connector has been used. So, to the point of, I shouldn't be using the Dynamics Connector. So, the Dynamics Connector was deprecated and replaced with the Common Data Service Connector. It is now no longer deprecated, and they're actually increased a version now. Um, so, the Dynamics Connector is still available to use. Um, so, at the moment, I've got a few cases open with the product team where the CDS connector and the Dynamics connector has inconsistencies in how it interacts with Dynamics or the CDS. So, for example, there are certain entities within the CDS that you can delete using the Dynamics connector, but you can't delete using the CDS connector. So these, these are known issues that the product team are looking into, um, but there is some inconsistencies, which is why I expect that the Dynamics connector is still available. It's not going anywhere. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much if you're using the Dynamics Connector, it's going to still be available for, for the time being. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just have a quick look. So we've got Dynamics 365 and then Teams. So we can have a quick look here to see, is there any connectors that use both of those pieces? So I can see one here just now. Notify your team about new opportunities. So there's already a connector there that I can use. So we'll use that as a starting point. So you can click on that team, what it'll do is it'll show you what your connectors are. So it's using Dynamics 5, Microsoft Teams, and it's got a brief description of where you able to add to your CRM, alert your team about that activity. So this is a good starting point for this. So what we'll do is we'll click continue. And what that'll do is it'll start our flow for this. Whereas previously, if we'd have to start from scratch, we would have to go through select for trigger, select for action. But what we've done here is we've just created both of those pieces right from the offset, and it's just a case of populating the values. So when the record's created, so in this case, we need to select from Dynamics what organisation. So in this case, I've got one Dynamics instance to use, so I'll select that, and then select which entity. So in this case, we're talking about opportunities. So we will do, so select box, start typing opportunities, and we can select our opportunity. So that's our trigger action. So on the creation of a record, so the creation of an opportunity, that is what kicks off this flow. So the next thing we're going to do is it's going to do an alert to the team. So what we can do is we've already got a connection to Teams. So I've already got a team called Dave Burrow. I will select that. I can select my channel. So I just put it into my general channel. And then we select what content we want. So for those of you who have not used Power Automate or Flows before, what happens is, is when you've created the different steps within your flow, it makes available dynamic content. Can you zoom a bit? I can zoom a bit, yes. Okay. Is that better? Yeah. Excellent. 
So what happened is, from the previous steps, so for example, we used the opportunity, so the creation of what we then get access to is all of the information from the opportunity as dynamic content. So what you can do is you can start to utilise that, dyna that dynamic content from the previous steps and put it into any of your following steps. So from here, what we've got is we've got the alert team. So what we need to do is select what we want to alert the team of. So in this case, what we can do is we can say new opportunity, and then we can pick any of the dynamic content that's available. So we can select the topic, so the subject, so we can drop that in. So what happens when the flow runs, it knows the context of the previous step and pulls it down into your next step, so it's put in the topic. And you can put in as much information as you want. So you can have then, for example, <coughs> description. And we'll put in oh, not sorry, quite soon, email address by mistake. We can click on description. So we can then save that. So that's us put in our first step into our flow. So what we need to do now is we need to test it. So what I would suggest is as you're building flows, rather than building a flow that's hundreds and hundreds of steps, saving it and then testing it, you'll run into problems. What I would do is I would maybe do one or two steps, test it, another couple of steps, test it, because otherwise you might get some unexpected behaviour, um, particularly if it gets quite complex. Um, I'll show you a flow that I've got that's got a lot more steps in it, um, and it's, it's more complex in it. I created that from start to finish and realised that step one had an error. Um, so yeah, so it's much better to, to run through and test. So what we'll do is, the first thing we do is we just click on flow checker. So that is a nice way of saying, check my flow for anything that I've missed. It's not going to point out logic errors. So if you, for example, put the wrong information into your description field for your team's post, it's not going to tell you that. What it will tell you though is if I've left that blank, it will say that's blank, you're not actually doing anything here. So in this case, we've not got any errors. I'll show you what it does when there is an error when we add our Twitter step on next. And then what we do is we click on test. Depending on the trigger action, you'll have an option to either use already existing data or to perform the action yourself. In this case, because we've not done any tests on this, we need to perform the trigger action ourselves, and we'll click Save and Test. What will happen is it'll sit for a second, and then you'll get this big loading wheel. It'll sit like that for usually about half an hour before it times out. So what you have to do in order to check to see whether your flow works, is you have to perform the trigger action. So in this case, we'll go to Dynamics D65. I'll go into my sales hub. <coughs> Two packs of authentication. So in this case, the trigger action is the creation of an opportunity. So what we'll do is we'll open up our opportunities. I'm just going to change this to open opportunities. And <coughs> we a new one. So in this case, we're just going to call it Spotty Summit 2020 test. I'm going to select contact and an account. And give it a description. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to save that opportunity. And while that's saving, what I'll do is I'll go back to my flow. And what's happening in the background is this flow is sitting waiting for that trigger attribute to happen. And when it happens, what it'll do is the wheel will change 
And I'll say with all the grunt, so we'll do it. A wee second. See, this is where the demos go wrong. But hopefully not. Did you sacrifice a PM to the demo much? Not this time. I only decided 10 minutes before the session, this is the way I was going to do it, so. <laughs> Not an official SLA, so I've seen it taking anywhere between 5 seconds to 15 minutes. Um, it really does depend. Yes. No, not at all. Okay, for some reason that. Let me just go back there. Yeah. Okay, we will test that again. So it's hopefully saved this time. Ah, oh, there we go. So my flow's now run successfully. So we'll give it a wee second to catch up. So we can see that my flow's run successfully. So what you can then do is you can have a look at the information of your run. So what we can see is it took the input from the organization they borrowed from opportunities. It then went and got the information from the opportunity itself. So it'll give you all the information that is acquired so we can see that we've got the potential customer of our topic, with account ID, if we go down we'll see our description, all of that information. So it's got all of that information. So this is where running and testing it each time becomes useful because you don't want to be scrolling through hundreds and hundreds of steps and looking to try and find out where it's not went right. Because if you pass the wrong parameter into the first flow, <laughs> or the first step, that's going to be the parameter that gets passed the whole way through. Um, so it's much better to test and make sure that it works at each individual step. So if we then have a look at our second step, we've got alert the team, and we can see that we've input to this team, to the general channel, with the message new opportunity test, with a description of test. And it's been successful. So if we just switch over to here, go to my general team, we can see that per 15 we posted new opportunity test. Thank you. <laughs> That's only step one, we've still got Twitter to go. <laughs> okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this tab because rather than trying to think, right, what do I want to do with Twitter, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my templates. I'm going to put in Twitter and I'm going to have a look to see what other people have done on Twitter. So you can see people have taken tweets and saved them to SharePoint. And you can see people have posted items to Twitter after approval. So lots of different things we can do. So what we'll do is we'll just scroll down and we'll say, so I want to create a new tweet from Facebook post. So I don't want to actually create it from Facebook. I just want to use the Twitter piece of it as my connector. So what I can do is I can create this flow. I can click and edit. So I only really want this step. So what I can do is, rather than having to go and find, post a new tweet, etc., when I'm creating, or, or to add it to my other flow, what I can do is, under the free ellipsis, we've got an option here called Copy to Clipboard. 
So what we can do is we can click copy to clipboard, we can go to the original flow, we can edit that, and then click new set. <coughs> so rather than trying to find the specific connector you want, you've already got that from your template and we've copied it to the clipboard. So you've now got post a new tweet. So you can select that and that's taken all of the information from the other um, flow that you've just created so that you can reuse that code. So that brings us on to the reuse and how do you reuse what you've done. Because for example, I know people that have got big massive flows that have got lots and lots of steps and it's right at the beginning it's checking one condition. They want an exact duplicate of that but to check a different condition. So rather than trying to create the new flow from scratch, you've got some other options which I'll show you from the export and import. Um, but you can do a copy and paste across flows. Will be warned it is a new feature, it's still in preview. It doesn't always work exactly as expected, so do check it. Um, but there is um, some fairly good results. And what you'll see is on the initial tweet, the message was a Facebook message. It's automatically converted to the closest thing you can find in Dynamics, which is the message. So that's not really what we want to tweet. So we can just delete that step out. And what we'll do is, I have to do that now. So I'm going to have to zoom out again just so that we don't end up with. So tweet text is new pop and then we want to add in so you can see we've still got access to all of the dynamic information from the previous step and we've also got access to the body information that we created so rather than having to put in the description, the topic, etc. We can just select body and what that will do is from this step where we populated this body, it will take that information and put it into the next step. So I don't have to spend time typing new opportunity, description, etc. It will just take that information into the next step. You've then got some advanced options so you can, if you've got media, so if you've got a file against your opportunity, a customer image, you can put that in there as well, and it will post that along with your tweet. But what we'll do is we'll just post, in this case, our body. So we'll click save. We'll save it again. Check our flow, no errors, no warnings. And we'll click test. So this is now, because we've previously ran it, we can use the same data we did previously to run it again, so you don't have to go and create a new opportunity every time. Or if you want, you can perform the action yourself. In the interest of time, I'll use data that I've previously ran. It will give you the option to run both succeeded and failed records, so you can choose either of them. In this case, we'll choose the one that I ran. We'll click on test, and we can see it running through the process. So we've had a fail. So, this is where the flow checker doesn't catch everything. What will happen is the flow checker will look for errors where there's information missing. It won't look for logic errors. So what we need to do is, to find out what's happened, we can see it's processed through the first couple of steps, but it's failed at the tweet. So what we can do is we can have a look here, and we can see, so as we would have expected, what we're trying to post is more than 200 characters. So Twitter's rejected it. So we can actually post that, that information to, to Twitter. So what we need to do is if we go back, we can edit our flow, select tweet. We know body's not going to work. All that I want to post at this point is the topic. So if we just find the topic of the opportunity, or you can just type topic. We'll save that. Again, we'll check the flow errors, none there, and we'll test it. <coughs> and we'll use, this time I'm going to use the field, and we'll do a test. 
Could you put uh, something in between that to say always limit this description to 200? You can. So there's, if we've chosen the convert function, um, what you can do is you can um, extend or um, aggregate the information. So you can say only do the first 200 characters, but there's a few more steps involved in that. So what you would do is pass your description and your body content into the aggregation function, concatenate it to X number of characters, and then use the output of that for, for your tweet. Okay, so I've now posted a tweet, so what we'll do is I'll just quickly open up Twitter. So I've now posted test on my Twitter timeline. People are going to be like, what's that? <laughs> so what I'll just do is I will delete that. Just so people aren't overly confused. <laughs> Okay, so we touched a wee bit on how to reuse and repeat. So one of the methods is copy and paste between your tweets. Other methods are, and what I tend to do is, if I build a complex flow that I think I'm going to reuse that again, what I'll do is I'll export it out of Flow and save it in a library. So what you can do is, from your Flow, you've got the option to export it and you can download it as a zip file. So this is useful for reusing code, but it's also useful from a development point of view. So if you've got a massive development and you're running like application lifecycle management to manage source control and code, you can then check these into to DevOps as well. So you can start to introduce version control on your flows, um, which is really useful in kind of more big enterprise type implementations. So you can export it out as a zip. So there's a few nuances here that you need to be aware of. So you give it a name, so we just call it Test Scottish Summit. You can give it a description, etc. The bits that you need to be aware of, when you export it, because you could give this to anyone, you don't want to include any of your credentials, because otherwise when they install it, they'll start to use your connections to your instances, which can cause all sorts of problems. So what happens is, is it tells you here what related resources, so these are all your connectors that you've used, so we've used for Teams, for Twitter, for 365, and it's telling you that you're going to have to select these again during import. So what will happen is you'll import your flow back into Power Automate, <coughs> and it'll ask you to specify which connections you want to use. Um, so again, this is a really good security and control piece that you're not going to put a, bit, um, a flow out into the template library and all of a sudden it has access to your Dynamics instance. Okay, control. So this is probably the most important thing. So if you enable people in your organisation to build automations, there's a huge amount of risk so this flow is actually a prime example of what customers have done. So there was a customer where every time they created a new opportunity, they posted it on Twitter. Great for their competitors, but from a commercial point of view, not great for them. So how do you actually control that? So when flow first was reduced, it didn't have any of this stuff. Microsoft quickly realised that in order to get Power Automate and flows into enterprise organisations, they had to put in a level of governance. So what they've done is they've now connected up Flow and the Power Platform to things like data loss protection, and you can set up AD groups to control who can and can create um, different flows. So what I'll do is I'll just quickly show you, this is actually a good example. Um, that we can test. So what I'll do is if I go back to my flow and you've got this area within the Power Automate platform called data. Oh, no, sorry, I'm in the wrong place. So if I go back to, sorry, my, I'll go to my admin panel. You'll see now that within the admin panel under all admin centers, you do have a flow admin panel. 
And what you can do here is you can set up data loss protection rules. They are still fairly simple at the moment, um, but they are working on it, so there is enhancements coming. So what you've got is you've got data policy. So this is effectively data loss prevention. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new policy. What you can do is you can choose to apply it to all of your environments or select specific environments to apply it to. So if you've got test environments that you want people to be able to do what they want, feel free. Um, in this case, I'm going to apply it to all my environments. And what you can do here is you can set up what's classed as business data and what's not business data. So we started off with Dynamics, which is very clearly business data. And that's the platform that business data lives. You don't, however, probably want that to connect to Twitter or SharePoint. Um, so what we can do is here we can add Dynamics. And what I'll also do is add, so we'll add the, the Dynamics connector, and I'll also add Teams. Teams being an internal system where you probably do want to be able to announce opportunities. So we'll select Teams and we'll add that connector. So what we can then do is we can save that policy. We'll give it a few minutes. And what that's doing in the background is it's setting up a policy that says, if you've got a connector that's got Dynamics or Teams, it is not allowed to send data out with those two applications to Twitter in this example. So what we should find is if we go back to the original flow that we built, we run it, it will give us errors now because it can't connect to it. Business group. Yes. So I would avoid putting social media into there unless. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, there is legitimate reasons why you may want to post information from Dynamics to Twitter to Facebook, etc. Um, but what you would then do is control specific people having access to certain policies. So a marketing team, for example, um, might want to post one opportunities because you've got a commercial agreement by that point, you don't want to post the work opportunities you're working on, as an example, because um, the sales direct tends to get quite upset about these kind of things. Can you limit what triggers are used? So if you decide, to, I don't want to use the dynamics trigger, I want to use the CVS corner map trigger all the time, can you just paint the dynamics so people don't? Not at the moment. Not at the moment. Um, it is coming, from what I've seen anyway. I'm guessing the dynamics so, yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so the, the security is layered. So that is a good point, actually, it's worth noting about the connectors. So the connector into Dynamics uses the credentials of the person that's calling the flow. Generally, you can set it up so it can use like a service account, etc. But if it's using the credentials of the person that's creating the flow, the flow will only have access to the data in Dynamics that that user's got access to. So if they don't have access to opportunities at all, it will never trigger for them. Um, so you need to have access to the actual data that you're triggering off of. So, so info, does it not always run in the context of the person that caused the trigger to trigger? You can change it. How do you change it? I'll come back to that. Yeah. Okay, so if we go back to our flows, we'll go back into our notify teams, mm -hmm. click on edit. Save. So now you can see we've got an error to say your flow is updated because it's currently suspended because you're trying to call an outside service that you're not allowed to post business data to. I'm really glad that worked. <laughs> <laughs> The other option is what people were finding was that from a mobile device you can also create flows and you can access information that's on the mobile. In order to get around that, you have to use something like Intune. Um, so, for example, I'm on my work phone and I can't copy out Outlook and paste it into Twitter or other applications. So, there's not a direct control within the flow to manage that. But there is other tools available like Engine um, and Master Data Management on devices, etc. So there is stuff available to, to be able to do that. Then we've got analytics. So the other piece of this is 
you want to know what's happening in your organization in terms of who's building flows, what are they doing. So what you've got, you've got the option to have a look as an admin as to what's happening. So what we've got here is we've got a Power BI chart that comes out of the box with a flow that shows you how many times the flow's failed, how many times it's been ran over time. So you've got that, that visibility. Um, also within the we go back to the admin panel. We can look at individual environments. If we look at my Scottish Summon environment, we've got resources which will show a list of every single flow. Not that one. It will show every single flow that's been created in the organisation whether it's turned on or off. So as an admin, to obviously satisfy. So these are all been created by me, so I'm going to be using in this tenant. But if there was other users in the tenant, you would be able to see all of the flows that they've created. And as an admin, you can turn that off and on. So flows created in Flows created in. So not what flows, no but flows. Yeah. Yes, so even if it's part of a dynamic solution, it will show up in here because that still counts towards your usage of flow runs. If as an admin you switch off here, can the user go back in and just turn it back on again within the mind flow? They can. <laughs> um, yes, the, that, absolutely. Um, so that, that's down to more of a process and a change management piece of educating the user, um, which is you're probably turning it off for the reasons, so they either have to go and modify it to make it compliant, or actually what the runs crazy, in which case you would probably just delete it anyway. Um, yeah. Can you set yourself as the owner and remove them? So they can activate them. So what you can do is, so you can go into um, this area here, you can delete it on on and off, but what you can do is, if you go into, um, there was a way to do it, let me know. the same person anyway, so yeah, so it's maybe a, that's why it doesn't show yeah, the option. Yeah, I'm sure you can go in and edit the other person's flow as long as you've got admin rights. Um, There's a modified that person, it's a different user. If you've, if you've changed the flow or it, it probably, probably, I don't know if it doesn't notify them that it's been changed. Mm -hmm. um, they will get the notification to say that it's errored or it's been turned off, um, so they know you've done it. The other thing you can do though is you've got the option within an environment to add people as admins and makers. So if you don't want certain people to be able to create <coughs> flows at all, within the environments, so if you take the default environment under security, you've got admin and makers. So at the moment, the whole tenant has got access to, to this, but what you can do is you can add individual users as makers and admin, so that you don't have to give it and turn it on to your entire organization. Um, so you can select the people that you want to be able to, to do this. Questions? How do you get your in the context of someone else? I'll come back to that. <laughs> there is a place to do it. When you do the export, do you import that to the select that's just because of dynamics? Can you import that directly to the dynamic? Yes, you can. Yeah. So yes, you can do. The only thing that I would say about that, so let's say if I go to this flow, for example. <clears throat> okay, so if we expand out all of this. <clears throat> So this is where it starts to get more critical to test things before you get to the bottom. Because what, what I've done here is I've created this as one flow that said that a survey, it might have been pertinent to put in another flow there. The thing to consider is if you put a child flow or multiple child flows, every time this runs, your child flow runs, you're now using two runs rather than one. So it counts as a one for the counts as a run. So from a licensing point of view, that's the consideration. 
from a manager and being able to keep track of what's happening, absolutely split it up as much as you can, but consider the licensing impact because it will count as multiple runs. It's not just one trigger and then it can trigger hundreds of flows off the back of that, it will count every one of them as a new run. So we have a uh, approval flow that sets something to approve and then that flow triggers something else that's two runs. Two runs. Is there a way of grouping flow actions together? And what I mean by that is, okay, something, do something else and do something else. Is there a way of saying we've all got to achieve that before we do it rather than yeah. failing halfway through that? To an extent, it really depends on the use case. So if your flow says it needs to update at three different places, yep. if it fails at one of them, it'll fail your whole flow. But what you can do is if it has to meet those three updates before it does the next action, you can do your three actions in a check condition to say has it updated this, has it updated this, has it updated that. Yep. Um, but if it fails at any point of them, it will stop your flow. Well, yeah, it will update the first one, the second one, and may it fail, so it will update two out of the three of them. So it won't go back. It won't go back. An example you should look at is that when you may have a flow that's been updated for a while, and then you have a parallel branch, so that one fails and doesn't fail all the Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. I've not found one. Let's go first. I go and try, see where you can get to. Um, personally, I would go over maybe about 50 steps because it just becomes unmanageable. Particularly if you're doing lots of branching, just what you it just becomes really difficult to even navigate. Because even you can see here, by doing one branch, I'm still having to scroll between, so that's where it starts to become difficult. Um, the only limitations that I think you probably should be aware of is each step has to run within 30 minutes. If it sits for more than 30 minutes, it time out. Um, so you need to be aware of that. So you need to make sure that if you've got a big operation that's going to take more than 30 split up into, sorry, 30 minutes split up into batches, um, that's the only real limitation. The other one is you can't make a flow wait for longer than 30 days. Once it's gone to the 30-day limit, it'll time out as well. It's like it's going to kind of approve all wait until it comes back. Yes. So um, there is a guy called um, Sergio Luca who's built a pattern that allows you to call an API that starts the flow again, <coughs> so you can get around it. But it, for every 30 days, you use one flow run. Um, but there is no around it. And so the admin link will be to then export the post on just a scenario where colleagues are in a place instead of post-closing. Do you export the things that you're inviting for like search and then... You can. So I can't show you the only user. Um, but what the other option is as well is if they share the flow with you, maybe an admin, you can fix it collaboratively um, rather than you taking it, fixing it, giving them back. I would say it would be better to work with them on it. Enable them to do it themselves rather than just fix it. So, just as a point of trip in, so I've had a lot where I'm using a list to get one record. Yes. And having to do the first overwrite this volume of. So, it doesn't do the mute all the time. Is that an easier, better? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, the only way that I've found to do it that's slightly cleaner is do your list records first, set the ID as a variable, and then do a get record. Oh, it's more or less the same thing, it just means that when you get to the update step, you know that you passed the right ID. You know how much of a component it is, so you tell me, and the finish is going to always bring back one record, it has to look at From a performance point of view, it's not going to make any difference in a get record. Um, it's, just, it's just you have to do that to get. Which again makes it a bit messy from an admin point of view. Okay, takeaways before we finish for lunch. I know everybody's probably hungry. So, when you're approaching flows, you've got knowledge, so knowing what your business does in terms of automation. You've then got experience of the automation, so looking at what are the processes that automations fit in, 
So you probably think that there's some fairly standard ones that fit in. An email comes in with certain information that needs to go to a certain department. Flow or Power is a great way of, of doing that. But what I would say is go and get creative, go and play with it, see what it's capable of. I've only shown you a tiny wee part of what we can do. It can do a lot more. Um, so I, my takeaway from this would be is go set up a trial and try it, play with it, see what you can do. Um, so just quickly before we, we break up. So I just quickly set up another flow here. So what are we Twitter engagement? Yes, yeah, so we can see. So what basically what I did for this one was take a tweet and post it into Teams. Um, so it was just a quick, quick test. Um, that this was the other case. This one went very wrong. But I had something to show you. Any more questions before we break up? Sorry, just one. So what you can do is, again this is a fairly new feature that wasn't about until last year, so I've built a flow here that strips emails attached <coughs> from Dynamics um, and puts them into blob storage. So rather than creating them directly within the flow portal, what you can do is you can go to your dynamics for CDS solution and up at the top you can do new. There is now an option to, to add flows. So what I've got here is my flow requires a couple of dynamic entities and a couple of custom fields. So I can put that in a single dynamic solution. Um, from a base practice point of view, if you've got Dynamics Alien or DevOps strategy in place and you use them with the solution package up, you can export this out in the same way you would with a standard solution, check it into DevOps, do all your versioning control, um, it works through the pipeline so you can use the DevOps pipelines, etc. Um, so that's certainly the approach that, that we take um, as we treat it as a dynamic solution. Mm -hmm. Can we get environment variables as well? If you do this for stuff in front of environment variables, so we do like a set from you move between environments, but have yes. a variable, it just makes it easier to move down. Yeah, environment variables are very new, um, they're not perfect, but they are, they are good. It's much better than hard coding and then importing it and changing it. Um, so yeah, it's definitely worth considering if you've got a lot of changeable items depending on the environment it's in. It's just, it's just everything with it, it's just a new area, that's the yes. support part that you work with, and now that you need to go there, I've lost this flow somewhere. Yeah. Um, Any more questions? No? Well, thank you very much. That is <laughs> <laughs>